Hi, I'm Mark Smith and welcome to Secret Gardens. I'm here today to take you around Vivian's garden. Uh, it's a, a, a garden that was in the NGS scheme a couple of years ago and uh, it's a little bijou garden with many interesting features. So let's go and take a look. Having been a NGS garden, it's a great source of uh, inspiration and uh, you can glean many good ideas from uh, gardens like this. This is no exception with this garden, it's got many great uh, interesting features that you can use in your own garden. I'm going to introduce you to Vivian who uh, created this garden. Hello Vivian. Hello Mark, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Have a seat. So how long has it taken you to create this garden that you've got here? Well, I've been here 39 years, but it was a new house. So it was just builder's rubble, the garden, when I first came. And I initially, it had a path up the middle of the garden, which cuts the garden in two when a garden is so small. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the first things to go. Yeah. And then I made it like a little cottagey garden type place, because I'm not a gardener don't come from a gardening background yeah. and that was the easiest thing to do I think just to get it tidied up I say took the path up and it looked a lot bigger just by doing that and gradually over the years probably in the last 15 20 years I've started to go in the minimalistic Japanese style yeah so did you have a plan for an oriental garden from the beginning or you you just had the you like the cottage uh, idea and then you've moved on to an oriental i i've, I've moved on to yeah. oriental because there was a patch of, of grass in the center which was ridiculous in a small garden it's too, too difficult to cut isn't it really yeah. yeah so i decided to pave block it i dug everything out for the pave blocking and put four tons of sand underneath there then at the time I had a slip disc so my, my brother did the paving for me. I brought all the bricks in but I didn't actually pave it myself but it, it, that's probably been down 20 odd years. Yeah. Um, One of the, uh, the striking uh, features that uh, greets you as soon as you come into the garden is your cloud trees and your, <laughs> your trim cloud trees. Um, shall we go and take a look at, uh, at your cloud trees? Yes if you want to, okay. yes I'll be pleased to show you. you. Thank you. So this is, uh, this is Ilex uh, Cronata. Did you create this yourself? No, it, it's a very old piece and I, I bought it basically done. But I've tried to keep it in shape over the years. I, I feed it and put um, leaf mould in. I collect yeah. the leaves up out of the street yeah. and rot them down and then put it in, in the tubs. It's keeping it absolutely lovely. I love for this. It's a really good uh, example of a, of a cloud tree. Now, it's lovely later on in the evening because you get the shadow of it onto the fence. Yeah. Of, of the tree itself so it looks really nice because yeah. the sun sets over there and it casts a, this casts a shadow yeah, onto on the this fence. beautiful coloured uh, <laughs> fence or unique coloured fence. Um, so you didn't create that but you no. did create uh, this uh, this is a cotoneaster. Yes uh, it is. So uh, this was one of the original plants from your original garden. Yes from like a little country garden but it, it should cascade the leaves and the, the right down to the floor but I decided about 20 odd years ago that I wanted to go Japanesey, so I cut it, hacked it all back, and twisted a few of the branches together, and keep on cutting it into a cloud prune shape, which I think is it, it used to have a branch going as far as the end of the fence almost, but that that died off, so I had to cut that off. I think eventually it will die because that's been in here probably 39 years I've been okay. here this August bank holiday. Yeah, it definitely uh, gives you the wow factor when you come into the uh, it? garden. Oh, it's, uh, it's a lovely, lovely uh, feature. It takes a lot of pruning and a lot of looking after. Well, it has this year simply because it's rained and it's been hot and it really does grow that particular piece. Um, but never mind, you know, we, we do it. <laughs> but it looked gorgeous in the spring. It was totally smothered in flowers. Yeah look like snow but of course you have to clip them off to keep it 
cloud shape. And, and that's right. <laughs> Unfortunately, and you, then of course you lose the berries. Lose the berries yeah, as well. You do. But uh, it's a, a fantastic feature. So Vivian, it's obviously a Japanese style garden and uh, as we've been talking, I've noticed this uh, unique stone uh, down here. What's this stone? Yeah, I bought it at the, the NGS Open Garden at uh, Coxbench. There was a man there who makes them. He lives in um, Mickelover and I, I was really taken with it and thought it would look well in my Japanese style garden and the, the writing on it means happiness and happiness. You, you know it's lovely to have something like that in a garden because it does actually make you feel happy when you when you read it yeah. you know it sounds a bit odd but it does well, that's, I, I, really, that's, I really like it that's what it's all about so of it, with it being a Japanese style garden, have you got, um, there's usually water in a Japanese garden, have you got any, any water features or a, a pond or anything yeah, like that? I have, but it's uh, probably a bit of an unusual pond. Well, let's take a look at it. <laughs> let's take a look. So you said this is uh, unusual. Tell us why uh, this is so unusual. <laughs> well, the, the big tub, it was on a skip. Somebody had thrown it away. It was originally a water tank in a loft and I just thought I could do something with it. So I bought some bungs and some special silicon that you use for water. You can't use the ordinary silicon that you have in your bathroom because no. it affects the water. So I bought some from the aquatics at uh, um, Finden yeah. and plugged the holes up and just set it up. I already had the, this is a Japanese horse tail. Yeah. So again, I tried to be a bit Japanesey, but that is an actual Japanese horse tail. Yeah. And I bought these floating hyacinths, but they've they've gone mad yeah. with the weather that they're we doing, have. They're doing very well. They're, they've just gone from the sublime to the ridiculous, really. You've got one of my favourite uh, plants in there, Lobelia. Um, I've <laughs> never used it or never seen it as a as a pond plant, and you tell me that uh, it uh, does very, very well in ponds, because well, I tend to use it as a herbaceous perennial. Yes, well, you can, but I bought that from the aquatic centre. It was already in a basket to plant sort of on the margins yeah. of, of a pond. So I bought some black bricks and stack them up inside the pond so that the basket could be high up near the top because it doesn't want to be deep down like, like the horse tail is. Yeah. And I think it works quite well, really. It does. It's I just uh, love the colour. It's, is it Victoria, that one? It is. It's Lobelia it is. Uh, Victoria. Victoria, with isn't the, it? With yeah. the red flowers. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. But it's, it's the dark colour of the leaf matches so well and, and stands out against the bright uh, background of the fence. Yeah. So the, uh, it also matches in really nicely with your metal bird. Yes, Tell us I'm a bit thrilled about your metal. with that. I was coming down a road one day in this particular... Uh, shop and I turned round at the island and went back because I, I thought you know I've not been in it for a while and the bird was just standing looking at me when I went in, into the shop and round the corner and I, it's a, an Obi Dyer creation and I, I just looked at it and thought that's going to look so well against that little pond it, it'll just stand out and add something to the pond and give it that sort of Japanese influence. Yeah. So I'm really, really pleased with it. it he has created a very nice piece. I love the purple on it. It yes, shimmers it's just lovely, beautifully. Isn't it? yeah. so, um, but it's, it does go so well with the garden. You seem to be able to match up all these different elements that, uh, that go all really very well together. I don't think the pond would have looked as nice without it, no. quite honestly. It, it just adds something, I think. It does, it does. Um, so, with this being a reclaim, tell us, a, um, will you show me some of the other things that you've done as a, as a reclaim? Um, we've got some uh, screens over here, so if you want to come and show me what you've done with some shower screens. <laughs> I thought this was a, a shower door, but you're going to tell me it's something different. But it I makes an incredible feature in your garden. But uh, tell us uh, how you came across this. Well, I was at the tip one day, and there were these. I think there were builders, and they were they'd lifted it up, and they were literally going to throw it over into the skip. And I said, "Stop, stop!" Because I thought I could probably do something with it at home. And it's actually a Pilkington's internal door. Right. I still have the handles inside, but I didn't feel it was appropriate to put them on for outside. But 
to me it looks like water cascading down. It does. Actually, from when I came into the garden, from this side, it looks like a sketch of your maple from the other side. And when you look from the other side, it looks like this waterfall yeah. effect Good. Uh, behind the uh, maple. So you, you're almost getting two different uh, uh, perspectives from, uh, from the same feature, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and as we was uh, talking about aces, um, you've got a lot of aces in your garden because it is obviously a, a, a Japanese theme garden, and they all look so healthy. Um, they're all in containers, which usually um, frustrates a lot of people because they tend to let them dry out. But all yours look very, very healthy. I don't let mine dry out. You don't let. Your, is there anything else that you do that keeps them looking well, so good? The, the dried leaves that I collect up out the street, I, I put leaf mold in. I think that retains the moisture. And I, and I do make sure I don't let them dry out because they hate lack of water. Yeah. They'll stand wind, they'll stand sunshine, but you leave them the watering off and yeah. they'll die. I spend a lot of time convincing people that they're perfectly hardy and the only real thing that you need to do is, is keep them well watered. Watered, yeah, that's yeah. true. And uh, they, all yours look absolutely stunning. And uh, what variety is this one? This is um, Skeeter's Broom. And going back to the watering, they do prefer rain water. Yeah. I have a barrel down there which comes, the water comes off the garden room roof. Um, and I, I do use that. Yeah. But if push comes to shove, yeah. then you use tap water, yeah. you know, if there's yeah. not much rain. Yeah. And uh, next to it is this gorgeous, what I thought was a sweet pea. <laughs> and uh, what I've now found out is that it's actually an edible pea. Yes, so it is. It's a beautiful flower on it, almost as good as a, a sweet pea. Uh, so where, where does this originate from then? Well, it, the, the seeds of the pea, this edible pea, were originally found in the Egyptian tombs of two and a half, three thousand years ago. Wow. And somebody planted them and obviously had grew some peas like these are just starting to form and they let them fully form and then you obviously you can grow the peas again and grow even more plants so that's what i do each year i i eat some and some i let grow fully and then i'll plant them again the next year but they were actually found in an egyptian tomb wow and i i got them from one of the open gardens that i went to once just bought a few so I don't suppose there's that many of them around. <laughs> no, and again, with it being an ancient thing, it's kind of within the keeping of this. Uh, a lot of your features in your garden are very, very old, and you've got a, uh, a sunflower next to it. Do you do you save the <laughs> uh, seeds from that and replant that well, each year? Well, a little or? story to that. I like to buy sprouting grains because they're very healthy to eat. Sprouting grains are and I buy the black sunflower seeds sprouting grains. I've never seen any black sunflower seeds, but this particular day, one of the grains had got roots on it. Oh. So I decided I'd plant it, and this is the result. So I'm assuming I'm going to have black sunflower seeds on there at some point. Yeah. So, but normally I wouldn't have a sunflower in the garden because yellow clashes with the red. <laughs> but, the, you know, I'm just doing an experiment, really, yeah. just to try and get some black sunflower seeds. I've seen them for the birds, but I haven't seen them edible ones no. for people to eat. But I can get them from a little shop already sprouting It's in, in, in town. So. Uh, and we're, we're standing next to your beautiful archway here, and it's actually not just one archway, it's two archways that's got a, a Clematis armandi going over the top. Yeah. It makes an incredible feature in your garden. Uh, do you use this a lot? Yes, uh, sometimes I bring the little table here in, in the winter and because the sun shines from over there and I can have breakfast here in the sunshine but it's too hot in the summer to have the table here so I move it up nearer the house. I chose the Almondii because it's evergreen because in a small garden you really do need something of interest through the winter yeah. otherwise it, it just looks terribly bare. So, so I mean, the aces obviously lose their leaves, but they're nice shapes. But the box balls and such like, the camellia, and even the bamboo are green. Yep. So that's why I chose the Almondii for, for the greenness uh, through the winter. And the perfume from the flowers in the spring, oh, it's exquisite, honestly and truly. Because a lot of people don't realise that a lot of clematis are scented. They just no. think of the flowers yeah. and they think of clematis armandii being an evergreen one and probably the only evergreen ones, but there's a lot that are scented. And this like one is particularly nice yeah. and I had a lot of flowers earlier on this year. Yeah. So uh, what's this um, 
wooden uh, sculpture that we've got in the archway here? Well, I would have liked a huge Japanese stone, really, for the Japanese influence, but they're incredibly expensive, so I was able to find two different pieces of wood, and I just put them together and put them underneath the archway, because I think it sort of draws your eye into there. And uh, the, uh, I know the, the phalaenopsis isn't really Japanese, but I think it looks quite well in there. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does make a, a nice feature, and actually the, the whiteness it, actually it do, lightens it, does it up. It. The white you know. always looks nice in a dark place. Yeah. So a little earlier on we saw the uh, pink black stemmed uh, hydrangea. I've noticed this gorgeous white one, which all matches with your uh, oriental uh, theme. So do you have any problems with these uh, at all? The stems tend to be rather floppy. But other than that, just keep them watered. Yeah. And that particular one's called zebra. I suppose it's the black stem and the white flower. Why well, they've probably called it zebra. It's uh, good. I, I personally like it with the with the black stems, but uh, I know that it matures and it goes to uh, the brown stems. But mm, it uh, it's, it's a particularly nice one. You can possibly use that for a cup flower, like most oh, yes, uh, yes, hydrangeas as well. I might try and train that as a standard. Just find one of the stems. And cut all the others off. Yeah. Because I quite like the one, and I, I do like the, the pink, other one, the, yeah. the pink one. I, I just like the height yeah. of it. I almost wish that I'd, I'd done the, the white one sooner than the pink. But yeah. there we are. I can have another go, can't I? Make you another can. one. You can. Mentioning the uh, the black stems of the uh, the hydrangea. Uh, let's go and have a look at the uh, black bamboo that you've got. All right then. So. This is one of the best examples of black bamboo or Philistasis nigra that I've ever seen and one of the things that I do like that you've done here is you've trimmed all the lower shoots off to reveal the canes which is actually the uh, attractive feature of this bamboo. Yes, I think so too. Is, um, do you have any problems with this? Um, a lot of people worry about bamboos uh, expanding and, and coming up in other par areas of your garden. Do you have to restrict this at all? No, this one is all right, but some of the bamboos are terrible. They'll, they'll spread in a year and they're very hard to get out. They're extremely difficult to split. Yeah. I, I did give a piece to someone once and, oh, we had to have a, get an axe to it. The roots are so tight. Uh -huh. And they're just but, like but wood, I haven't aren't they? had the problem uh, no. at all with this particular one. But I say some of them spread like mad. Yeah. These green stems are, are this year's new canes, and next year the, the green ones will be black. Okay. You know, there's a nice big one in there. I know Tissy used a few of these canes in the in the garden. Yes, to, I have. To uh, tie your uh, standard hydrangea up, It'd make a very useful tool well, of uh, to have a. Uh, a clump of bamboo in your garden that you can uh, readily take well, your it, it goes canes. with the black of, of the little arbor there you yeah. know I, I try and tie things in so you've not got too many colors no and i think it, in a small garden it just blends together better it does it's uh, it, it, it's in keeping with the black stemmed hydrangeas that you've got in the and the oriental feel but it makes an absolute gorgeous uh, feature and you've got this one in the in the ground here with your very nice um, bamboo edging stone and as they're well concrete they are yeah uh, and they, they, uh, they don't sell them anymore unfortunately no and they make a a, a great feature for your or oriental uh, garden like i say this is in the ground you've also got one in a uh, container um, what's the difference? Is this a, is it better growing them in the ground or oh, in the container? Oh, much contain better to grow them in the ground. Yeah. Yes, you, you get more stems yeah. if you grow them in the ground. If they've got more, and I leave their own leaves on the floor because it makes its own manure. That's I don't. I used to clear it all up years yeah. ago, yeah. but I leave it because it's actually feeding itself. That's right. Um, but I do occasionally give them seaweed. I, yeah. I use seaweed quite a lot, liquid seaweed. Yeah. Uh, and the same with the aces, I, I use liquid seaweed to feed those. Yeah, so it's not something uh, overly uh, uh, specialist, just seaweed uh, extract just yeah, to keep them nice and Or, or green. not a lot on this, because I say it feeds itself with it its does. own leaves. Because a lot of people do clean the leaves up because I, I, they look untidy. Yeah, I used but, to, uh, but I used to wear yeah. my skin away off my fingers with yeah. the stone and yeah. literally went down to my flesh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> till I learned a bit of sense. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go and have a look at the uh, little patio area where you have your breakfast in the morning. All right then.
they do. And uh, it's all in uh, all in keeping with your oriental the, the, feel. This is a Japanese um, cryptomeria. This one. Yeah. So this, this is where I have my breakfast. It's a very a secluded spot. It it's, is, isn't it? And, yeah. it, and uh, well, one of the reasons why it's so secluded is you've got this lovely uh, Fatinia red robin uh, screen that actually blocks you from the the uh, gardening gate. So yeah. it is a nice secluded spot. Um, so you have your breakfast out here every morning, or well, depending when the on weather's the weather. fine. Yeah, certainly in the summer. Yeah. In in, in the w in the winter, I take the table down in that little arbour because the sun get, goes in there first thing in the morning, yeah, yeah. and it's not too hot in the winter no, I no. come up here in the summer because it's just too hot especially this summer it's been really hot hasn't it yeah it's um it's interesting actually uh, I noticed that I thought your uh, black stem bamboo the other one that you've got actually in the container here was fruiting but I, I, <laughs> I see that you've got a, uh, a black currant in there yes it's a self-set one when I wash the black currants and throw the water I never throw any water down the sink it all goes in the garden because I think we're far too wasteful with water Absolutely. and I save all mine because a bamboo can drink a, a couple of three gallons in a day you know yeah yeah. Well, you can't just use pure water out of the tap three gallons a day, can you? No. You know, no, it's, so it's much, much better. So that is self uh, set from probably a seed yeah, that so was a in... Yeah, a seed from the wash black currant. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. And we've got a lovely passion flower behind us. Uh, obviously, uh, well, evergreen, semi-evergreen, bags of flower on it at the moment, uh, which gives you a, a nice effect. And I, I've noticed the odd fruit, fruit yeah, up there's there there's as well. Here. It uh, makes a, a lovely feature in the garden. Well, it hides that huge brick wall of, of, of next door's house. You know, as nice as the house is, that would be a very blank wall without the passion flower on it. Yeah. And that I needed something that would screen the wall. It, it gives you a nice, cosy yes, feel. Yes, I think you need that when you're eating, don't you? Yeah, you want to feel, feel sort of enveloped somehow. You do, you do. And you've got the evergreen honeysuckle uh, here and your um, climbing hydrangea and your Japanese cryptomere. It's all in keeping with that same, uh, same theme. And in this same area, um, not a particularly huge area, but you've, you've use the, um, the space that you've got really well. You've got a number of uh, aces and uh, all in containers and giving you wonderful different colours. I, I bet the, uh, the autumn leaf colour oh, is absolutely fantastic. Oh gorgeous, this African queen one in particular because the sun sets behind it and it looks illuminated, it, it looks magnificent even now in the summer when the sun sets but as the year goes on that red turns even darker and say with the setting sun behind it just looks superb it's it really does absolutely stunning example of it it's it's i hate to say but it's perfect the shape oh, it? of it is absolutely <laughs> perfect well, all the branches are going in all the uh, in the all the directions that it needs to go it's mm -hmm. i just leave corker. it and let let it do it's a, a, the odd dead bit you get on it just snip it off and you've, you've got um, the uh, cedar on the floor yeah, there. That's and um, feeling blue, feeling that's blue. cool. But I had to cut quite a lot of that off when I put that garden room in because it went further over the cedar did. Yeah. But so I had to dig out and put sand down and put the garden room Is that in there. the ground or is that in the it, container? No, no, that's in the ground, that one. But it, I like it because it's, it's a Japanese style. It sort of yeah. sticks out here, there and everywhere. And, uh, and also uh, what makes a really nice feature that we've not really mentioned uh, as of yet is your, your bluey green stone that you've got on the ground. Um, what, uh, what stone's that? Can you remember what stone No, uh, I can't stone remember it is? what it's, it's, it is. Um, I don't know, uh, it's like a, a, a got a marble Some effect Some sort of a to type of granite thing. I could find out for so you, but I don't a, know at this particular a moment. A speckly effect to it, which yeah. um, even though it's green, it's got its own kind of, or a greeny blue, mm -hmm. it's got its own kind of shade of green, because you've got several different shades of green here, but it's a it's another colour and an interesting colour to mm -hmm. set off I the plants. I thought it uh, would plants. set off the plants, yeah. that's why I chose that particular colour. Before that, before I went Japanese, I just had the sort of a gold and gravel yeah. which is still underneath there but I never do any digging in the garden no, ever no no Not so it at keeps all. all the weeds down yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't for saying this used to be fields where these houses are I yeah. mean look at that huge 
field maple at the, the back there. Yeah. I use it as a backdrop for the garden, but it's a pain, to be honest, because yeah. of all the helicopter seeds that come down. Yeah. Yeah. I have to pick up thousands of them, thousands. <laughs> well, while we're sitting here, we've got to talk about, is this a, a reclaimed table, or is this a...? Uh, no, it was a dirt cheap one in a sale, and it's actually mosaics underneath this, but over the years I've painted it, and since I've been Japanese, I've painted it sort of an orangey red yeah. to go with the garden. Again, it matches with the with the mm -hmm. fence uh, as well, and it's uh, it's absolutely sublime. I like the uh, the the back black legs and the uh, the top because again, <laughs> it's all in keeping. Well, it with wouldn't you. look right if it was yellow, no, would it? No, no, just it, wouldn't. Uh, it would stand out like a sore thumb. It and would. then you've got your little miniature uh, bonsai right, here. Yes. Um, it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for showing us around your garden today. It's been absolutely fantastic, and there's lots of uh, inspirational things that you've done to your garden that we can take back and, uh, and use ourselves. And to show our appreciation of, uh, of you showing us around your, your garden, we have a little gift. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. Um, and I've, I've thought long and hard about this particular plant because I know that uh, you lovely. think uh, extremely hard about the plants that you use in mm -hmm. your garden. And what I've got here is a uh, Laura Potanium Chinese, I'm glad you know how to pronounce Chinese it. fire dance. <laughs> um, this is an evergreen plant. Right. Uh, it doesn't get particularly big, only sort of three to four feet. Uh, can be grown in a container or grown in the ground. And it has these lovely, bright, vivid pink uh, bracts on. Uh, oh. A bit like a, a hammer mellis, you know, witch oh, yeah, hazel. Yeah. Um, but it, that's for you, and that's mm, on behalf of uh, Burton you. TV News. Lovely, thank you. Lovely. When does it flower? Oh, it sorry. flowers in the spring. It right. flowers in the spring, and if you're very, very lucky, it also flowers in the, the end of August, September time. Oh, right. So it won't do this year, though, will it? Not. No, the it's, it's still it. a quite a young plant, yeah. but uh, like I say, it's this beautiful um, I like the evergreen, leaf of deep it. Yeah, uh, purple. And I thought it would just yeah. be perfect addition to your yes, garden. Yes, thank you. I'll have to think of a spot to put it then, won't I? Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to come and see it, they'll have to pay £2.50 and I'll put the money to the Mind charity. Excellent. <laughs>